Hi for you news viewers, Nikki Anderlade reporting here at GDC Day 1, sponsored by Sanyo's Batteries in a Loop, and we are talking with former EA founder, Trip Hawkins, and he's actually taken the time to talk to us today, which we are very fortunate to have, but I'm going to ask, ask him a few questions about his background before we get into digital chocolate. So, Trip, what brings you to GDC? Well, I'm very excited to be here. I was the uh, keynote speaker at the uh, mobile conference uh, this morning. Of course, uh, this, is, this is my customer base in the mobile market. We're trying to serve everyone. And, uh, you know, as a participant in the game industry the last 30 years, it's uh, amazing for me to see how this event is grown. There's 15,000 people here. I remember the very first one of these where we all fit in this tiny little room. Why don't you tell us about EA and how it came about, why you left? Well, I, f I found it in 1982, but I'd been actually thinking about it for about a decade uh, before that and always wanted to start a company like that. After building it and running it for about a decade, I decided that the market was kind of stuck and the hardware needed to move forward in a way that I didn't see the existing hardware companies doing. So that's when I started 3D. I was kind of a sister company, but you know, in ways that I didn't really fully anticipate, the two companies kind of had to... Uh, go in separate directions and that created more tension and I kind of had to pick which way to go and at that time uh, 3D was uh, kind of like a little baby on uh, life support and intensive care having open heart surgery and by that time Electronic Arts was a very successful company, been uh, industry leader for several years and profitable for many years. So I went and you know just uh, to focus on uh, trying to help 3DO and you know, 3DO uh, hung in there for a while. The company lasted for about, I guess, uh, 13, 14 years and had a, had a good run. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, the reasons why eventually it, it had to be uh, sold off. And uh, now with uh, Digital Chocolate, I've kind of gotten back in the game again uh, on, the, on the mobile platform. And I've spent my whole career doing new media. So this is kind of my comfort zone. I, I get really excited about new platforms and new media and trying to figure them out and, and uh, enjoy the pioneering. Yeah, actually, a 3DO is every collector's dream to have in their possession. I actually have one myself. Oh. But, um, so why don't you, you tell have, us? You have Twisted. What? Do you have Twisted? No, I don't. I don't. You know, that's the, uh, Twisted probably is the the the, the uh, most fun game still uh, for me to play on the 3DO. Oh, so you actually still play it? Oh, sure. Yeah, Twisted is a great family game. You can play with a whole whole group of people at the same time. And I was also a big fan of Return Fire. I don't know if you ever played that one. Of course, Road Rash. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did quite frequently. Um, but please tell us about Digital Chocolate and how that came about. Well, uh, I was actually pretty excited a few years ago just in noticing how the mobile phone had turned into a computer. It's kind of an accidental computer. You know, it started as a phone, and the phone companies realized, wow, you know, if we use digital compression, we can get more phone calls on the same network. So that was why they did it. But then once it turned into a computer, now you've got this uh, computer, and everybody's carrying one around, and it's, it can communicate over a network. What an incredible thing. And you know now, of course, it's uh, it's got more computing power. We've got color graphics, uh, you know, all this network capability, and everybody has one. I mean, we're in the process of three billion people carrying these uh, phones around, and they can all play games. And they can all use them to, to connect with each other. And I'm especially excited about the social potential, the way people can use them to to connect with their friends and family, and, and also meet new people. Okay, so you're actually a few pictures of some of the games like Tornado Rampage and that actually received kind of a, an honor of sorts by IGNs. Um, they got a, a perfect score since what, since Zelda? Yeah, so Tornado Mania is the only mobile game that IGN has ever given a perfect score to. We're very, very proud of that. But we, we had a really good run the last three years leading the industry all three years and having the highest quality ratings. And then last year we won uh, the most awards in the industry. IGN gave out 17 Game of the Year awards and we won nine of them. So we're kind of on a roll, and, I, and it's because of what we specialize in. We, we do a lot of innovative, original thinking in mobile games and pioneer new brands that nobody's ever seen before in any other form, like Roller Coaster Rush, Tower Blocks, Nightclub Empire, uh, Tornado Mania, uh, Mafia Wars. You know, th these are new experiences that are really fun that anybody can play and that only exist on your mobile phone. And you know, we, we try to align ourselves with what mobile is really all about, to you know, try to make it a first-rate platform for people. Uh, you actually said that the nightclub game was released in Canada. Was it received very well? 
Yes, we, uh, we've done some fun things with that game engine where basically you're running nightclubs and you get to pick your DJ and pick your music, so why not collaborate with the music industry and have their music in there and have their artists in there? So Chaos is a, a well-known artist up in Canada. His, uh, his new album is coming to the U.S. in a couple of months and he maybe may have uh, an impact here. But when his, al when his last album released in Canada, it was the number one selling album. And we created a special version of our game where he's in the game as a DJ, and you can play his music in your club, and then you can also buy a ringtone of his uh, hit song and install it on your phone. And the last thing talked to us about was Ava Peeps. We spent a lot of time on that, so would you mind giving us a rundown of what that is? Yeah, Ava Peeps is very exciting. The idea is uh, creating an avatar and deciding their personality and having this turn into kind of your alter ego or your fantasy life as a virtual character that's living on your phone and you send the avatar out and it meets other avatars and it goes on dates with other avatars and then you get these stories back and your avatar can have 20 different emotional states so it might be really happy and it might be really mad and it all depends on what's going on in its social life and so that's sort of entertaining to decide uh, you know, what, what kind of avatar you want to have and, and where you want to go and what kind of uh, avatars you want to meet. But then you can also then send text messages back and forth with the owners of the other avatars. Uh, we put this out just in very limited release so far. It has, has not been released everywhere. It's only on Boost Mobile, kind of in a test. And we served millions of pages in the first couple of days. And we had customers that were going on lots and lots of dates. Uh, one pair of avatars had been on 26 dates with each other within the first couple of days. And within a week, we had thousands of postings to our blog from users talking about how much fun they were having. And we even had reports of users that were their avatars had started dating. And then they'd met and started dating in real life and had uh, real dates face to face. And you actually said that your daughter was very interested in this. So is there any kind of threats for young teens that are playing this game? Well, we're very, we're very careful. Uh, you have to be at least 13 to play the game. And we filter out uh, the uh, uh, text so that you know, somebody's not going to receive a text message that is you know, really inappropriate with a lot of bad language in it and so on. And in, in order for people to message each other, they both have to opt in for that feature. So you don't get unwanted messages. And in fact, if you decide you like somebody and then you decide you don't like them, you can block them and you don't have to hear from them again. Or that, you know, you won't ever, your avatar won't even run into their avatar after that. So, you know, it's got a lot of the kind of protections that, that you really need to have. And of course, uh, you know, you're, you're probably playing with people or, or going to be playing with people that are all over the world. So it's not like you have to look over your shoulder or that there's some creep that's uh, watching you and, and playing with you. Uh, it's, it's not going to be like that. Well, actually, sounds like Chocolate has exploded. Do you have any ideas what your future plans for the company are? Well, we're, we're very uh, pleased in the, in the last year because uh, a lot of the, the phone companies, they started out and they weren't really sure what to do. And they thought, well, you know, we know there are these uh, existing gamers that play on the PlayStation and we know what brands they're familiar with. Why don't we offer games for gamers? And we sort of came in and said, well, hey, why don't we not do that? Why don't, why don't we make a bunch of new stuff? that uh, maybe women would like and that, that the youth market would like even if they don't play hardcore video games. And, and initially, the uh, phone companies, they were thinking, well, yeah, but you know, nobody's ever heard of that. Well, it was the same way when I started Electronic Arts. Nobody had ever heard of that. Nobody had heard of EA Sports. And, and, and a lot of new brands that uh, I was able to develop in the 1980s. And we're, we're doing the same thing all over again. And I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, we've now convinced all the uh, major phone companies that they should support what we're doing and we're a very important part of that mix. So I think that if you have a customer and they, they love uh, an existing video game brand, whether it's uh, Madden Football or Grand Theft Auto or whatever it happens to be, uh, maybe they'll be able to play a version of that on their mobile phone. But what's likely is that it's not as good as the Xbox version. What's also likely is that they know that. And even those customers would rather try something fresh and new. And especially if you're doing things that are fresh and new, that more people can enjoy and that you can share with more people and again you, you know use it as a way of expanding your social network okay anything else you want to add i think that uh, that pretty much covers it so uh, enjoy playing and seize the minute that's our slogan seize the minute all right trip hawkins himself here at gdc an innovation wizard in its own all right that's nikki Anderley at i4u news sponsored by sanyo in a loop stay tuned